When I was a kid growing up, my sister and I would watch our daytime TV game shows with our neighbors, two sisters from across the street. During the summer months when school was out, we'd watch Let's Make a Deal with Monty Hall, The Price is Right with Bob Barker, The Dating Game with Jim Lang, and The Newlywed Game with Bob Eubanks. Every once in a while, our regularly scheduled TV shows would be interrupted with an announcement. A confident man's voice would deliver this message. This is a test of the emergency broadcast system. This is a test. This is only a test. That brief announcement has reminded me down through the years that every once in a while I'm going to encounter a season of difficulty. Every once in a while I'm going to be faced with a season of challenge. But not to worry. This is a test. This is only a test. In John 16:33, Jesus says, "In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I've overcome the world." In other words, God has the last word on every one of your situations. That setback you're experiencing right now is really a setup to a comeback. Your difficult situation is really a launching pad, a springboard to propel you into your next season of victorious living. My friend, your best and brightest days are not behind you. Your best and brightest days are still out in front of you. You have a great future and you have a bright hope. This difficult season that you're in right now is not working against you. It's working for you. If I were to sit down and have a cup of coffee with you right now, I'd learn very quickly that you have a story. Your story consists of high points and valley experiences concerning your family or some significant event in your life. We've already established that anybody who wants to live a godly life will experience some difficulty, right? Well, I can attest to that. It seems that hard times really didn't start coming my way until after I started living for Jesus. So it's a fact, tough times will come for all of us. So we must prepare for them, just as you would prepare your car for the road, or prepare your home for the winter, or prepare your body for flu season. You must prepare your life for difficult times. For 8 years I taught middle high school music and English. My routine as a teacher was a lot like that of many teachers. On Monday, I'd hand out a list of vocabulary words. During the week, my students would learn to spell those words, pronounce those words, learn their definitions, use them in a sentence. And then on Friday, everybody knew that there would be a test. So you see, the test has a distinct purpose. For the student, the test indicates that the student has learned the lesson and has applied what he or she has learned. For the teacher, the test is necessary to track the student's progress and determine if the student is ready for advancement. You've been conditioned ever since you were a child in grade school that eventually the test is coming. Times of testing should be so familiar to us that we shouldn't be surprised when we have to take them. In the book of First Peter, chapter four, verse twelve, we find a great word of encouragement. Listen to this, dear friends: Do not be surprised at the painful trial you're suffering, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that That you may be overjoyed when His glory is revealed. Every week, my students expected the test. They even knew that from time to time there might even be a pop quiz. As a matter of fact, my students would be surprised if the week went by and there wasn't a test. So you have a choice as to how you'll face that trial that you're in right now. You can nurse it. You can call attention to it and try to get sympathy for it. You can throw yourself a pity party. That's a party where nobody comes but you. You can rehearse it. You can keep repeating all the bad things you're going through, and you can tell the same old sad stories until even you get tired of hearing them. Or you can reverse it. Remember, Jesus has given you a brand new story, so you can say, "In the name of Jesus, I'm not a victim, but I'm a victor. I'm not going under. I'm going over. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater is He who is in me than He who is in the world." You can face today with fear and trepidation, or you can face today with confidence, knowing that you don't face this day alone. Jesus is right here with you.
my friend, that test you're taking right now is bringing about maturity in your life. It's developing your faith. It's strengthening your fight. It's stirring your fearlessness. That test you're taking right now is launching you into spiritual adulthood. As a classroom teacher, I've never given a test when I wasn't right there in the classroom with my students. And I never tested them over anything I hadn't taught them. With Jesus as your teacher, every test is an open book test because you have God's word to guide you. So no matter what today holds, God will not abandon you. Don't even worry about tomorrow. God is already there and he's working everything together for your good. When that season of testing comes, you can sit down in your assigned seat in the classroom of faith and take every test without fear. Remember that trial that you're going through is a test. It's only a test. And with God on your side, you're certain to come out on the winning side. Let me encourage you to make this declaration today. Repeat after me. My tests do not intimidate me. With the help of Jesus, I can pass every test with flying colors. May I pray for you right now? Father, what a privilege it is to come to you and talk with you. And what a joy it is to pray for my friend right now. The possibility is great that they're going through a season of difficulty and they might even wonder if they'll make it. Every test that we face today calls for more strength and more grace than we have, but not more than you have. Your strength is perfect and your grace is sufficient. Help us to relinquish that stranglehold that we have on our problems and turn everything, absolutely everything, over to you. Thank you for the assurance of your presence. And it's in the strong name of Jesus we pray. And thank you. Amen.